In this video, we're going to discuss the main toolbar at the top of your Shortcuts A Lot software. The first icon is the New Project icon. When we click on this icon, we're telling Shortcuts A Lot that we want a fresh slate, a blank canvas with nothing on it. It's pretty much that simple. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to pretend that we're working on some numbers and names for jerseys for a softball team. I'm going to call my project Softball Team 2 because I've already created a file called softball team and I don't want to duplicate it. Now you typically won't have to change any of these settings unless you need to because you have a machine that's capable of cutting at 12 by 24 or maybe you have a really large format cutting machine and you want to specify the size of your vinyl roll. Now if you have a Cricut Explore or a Silhouette Cameo or a Brother Scan and Cut I'm going to leave this alone at 12 by 12 and leave the units as inches for us in the United States if you prefer to work in millimeters or centimeters, you do have that option here. I'm going to click OK, and I have a fresh blank slate here, and you can see the name of the project, Softball Team, up here at the top. Now I'm going to close Untitled 1 because I don't need that anymore. Here is my Softball Team project. Now let's say that we have 14 or 15 players on the team, and I want to put each person's name on a separate mat, but keep it all contained in that one project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my type tool here and I'm going to select uh, a font that I commonly use when creating jerseys and jersey numbers over here on the right hand side under text which you can access by clicking these little A's here on this little A icon. Now here is the entire list of fonts that I have installed on my computer. Now the one that I'm interested in is called Varsity. Now if you want you can actually just type the first letter of the font on your keyboard and it'll go down at the bottom here you'll see that the letter V the first font with the letter V comes up at the bottom and I'm gonna select varsity team bold as my font and I'm just gonna spell out my last name okay and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just for the sake of this tutorial obviously you can use the guides here you can also use the position and size section here on the right hand side to tell you what the width and height is of what you have selected so in this case, these letters are 6.6 .6 inches wide. It's probably going to be too big for a jersey, but I'm just trying to illustrate that it will tell you what the width and height is of whatever you have selected. So now I'm going to click over here on my text tool again and click somewhere else on the map and put the number for that player, which would be me. I'm going to resize it and just pop it right under there. Now when you move your object around, relative to the other object here, which in this case is my last name. You'll notice that occasionally, depending on where you drag it, you'll see a series of vertical blue lines. And those lines are used to help you align your uh, object to the other object. So if you see the blue line in the center, that tells you that whatever you're moving around and dragging, in this case my 34, that means that it's centered relative to this piece here, my last name. Now if you want to align things to the left, you can drag it and you'll see that there's a blue line aligning these ends here, indicating that these are perfectly aligned on the left. And I can move it over this way and you can see the blue line there, meaning that it's perfectly aligned to the right. Now I want to make sure that I have it nice and centered, so I'm going to leave it right there. Now one thing you can do to make your life even easier is organize all of these pages. Now as we mentioned there might be 14 people on the team. What I can do is I can double click down here where it says page 1 and I can put the person's last name here. I'll put my name here in the 34 and now you can see down here that this page indicates Kowal 34. Now what I can do is I can create a new page and I'm gonna call this Smith 23. Now when I do that and create that new page, it takes me to the new page. You can see that it's highlighted here. Now I'm going to go back to Kowal 34 and with my standard selection tool here, I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to right click and copy this. And I'm going to click on Smith 23 and just right click anywhere and hit paste. And it's going to take that same thing and put it on this page. And now what I can do is I can grab my type tool, double click on Kowal, and just write the word Smith. And I can double click on 34, type in the number 23 instead. 
And again, I'm going to take this and align it so it's centered. You can see the blue line in the center indicating that it's centered. And there is my second player. So again, we can go ahead and add another page. And we'll call this one Johnson 21. And since I've already copied this, it's on my clipboard, which means that I can right click and paste this again. It's just going to paste the last thing that I copied. I'm going to grab my type tool and I'm going to spell out Johnson. Double click on the 34, type the number 21, and then I can take this and center it. Okay, so you can see we've got three separate pages, all under the softball team project. Now let's go ahead and save this. And we can save all of our work in one nice compact file by going to File and hitting Save Project As. Now I'm going to go ahead and name the team just to save the file as something familiar. I'm going to call it White Sox, which is my home team. I'll hit Save. And there we go. Now the project is called White Sox. And we have Johnson 21, Smith 23, Coal 34. You would obviously repeat this as many times as you need to to create your entire team. So now let's close this, and let me just actually, let me close out of Shortcuts a lot completely, because I want to show you what the file looks like. Let's go to Quit. So here is the actual file that we saved. Now in my case, I have Shortcuts a lot 5 and 5 Pro installed, so I need to, I can't just double click on it, I have to tell it which program to open it in, but you should be able to double click on this file and have it open in Shortcuts a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on my Mac and open with Shortcuts a lot 5. Again, you should be able to double click on it and it should open up for you. And when you open it up, it's going to load the project along with the three pages that we already created with the individual's names. So this is just one example of how you can use projects and pages to kind of organize your work. Now aside from double clicking on the file from the desktop, that leads us to the next section here and I'm just going to create a new project just to get a fresh slate here. We can go under open. So when we click the open icon, shortcuts a lot in essence is giving us the ability to tell it which file to open. We just need to help it find where that file is saved. So if you saved it on your desktop, you'll open it from the desktop. Maybe you have it under documents or wherever. Now in my case, I saved it to the desktop just to make it easy to find. So by default, the format is set to all Shortcuts A Lot projects, which includes Shortcuts A Lot, the original, version 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if you have project files saved from any of these previous versions, leaving the format at this all Shortcuts A Lot project setting will look for any version. You really don't need to change this unless you're looking for a specific file from a specific version of Shortcuts A Lot. Otherwise, I would just leave it at this setting. So in this box, we can select the file that we want to open and just click open and it'll open it up. This is no different than double clicking on it from the desktop. In addition to the open button, you have a save button and the save button simply saves a project. Okay, it will not export an SVG. It will not export anything else. It will only save your current work for the current project that you have open. So if we create a new project, I'll just call this test and you can see here's my test project. You can have more than one project open at a time. If I go to test here and I just throw down a number just to put some content down. If we hit the save button, because it's the first time we're saving it, it's going to come up and ask you, give it a name. And we'll just call this test and save it to the desktop. Now going forward, after you've made some modifications to it, and I'm just adding whatever just to kind of illustrate a point here. After you save it the first time, when you click save, it's just going to update it. You don't need to give it a name. It already has a name. Right now we're just saving our work when we hit the save button. Okay, now on to the next section. We've got a cut, a copy, and a paste. These are functions that exist in basically every program. And they're not really any different in Shortcuts a lot. And there's actually a few ways of using these options. Okay, so if we highlight the number 21, or if we highlight anything for that matter, You'll notice that copy and cut are both available as options. Now the difference between cut and copy is if you copy something, it doesn't remove it from where it is. So we can copy this and go to a new project and then hit paste and it'll take that and put it there. Now if we go back 
And if we select this and if we hit cut, it copies it, but it also removes it from where it is. So if we hit cut, it's there. Let me go back and let's actually cut Johnson. So I'm going to highlight Johnson and hit cut and go over to this project here and hit paste. And now you'll see Johnson gets moved over here, but it is no longer here. Okay, but I'm going to undo it just to keep it how it was. So that's the difference between copy and cut. And obviously you know what paste is. Paste is just taking what you've copied or cut and you're pasting it onto another page. Or you can actually paste it onto the same page. So we can do a copy and then a paste and it'll just duplicate it. So copy and paste can be used on the same mat or between mats. It doesn't matter. In addition to these icons here, instead of going up here, you can select this and right click and do a cut, copy, or paste. Or you can even delete or paste in place. And paste in place, that's going to be something that's useful and we'll talk about that in more detail in the future. And one other place that you can use cut, copy, and paste is up here under edit. You'll see cut, copy, and paste. Now whether you do it by a right click, by using these icons, or in the main toolbar, they're all going to perform the same operation. Okay, so next you'll notice that we have an undo and a redo. So if we, let me open up a new, a new project here. And let's say you're working on something and you make a mistake. So let's just, let's just throw this down here. Or a better example would be, let's say you've got this nice and centered with that blue line. Let's say you accidentally move something out of place and you want to make sure that you put it back in the exact spot it was. You can just hit the undo button. And it'll take it back one step. So if it was a click or a move or a resize, whatever that function that you did that was incorrect that you want to undo, that undo button will do that for you. Now in addition to the undo, there's a redo. And redo is good, for example, if you are trying to decide if you like the positioning of a font in one spot or another. You can kind of go back and forth between the two to decide what you like better. Okay, so that takes care of the undo and the redo, which takes us into the import option. Now I know that the main icon listed above the import option here is an SVG icon. But this button will actually allow you to import more than just SVG files. So if we click on this, Shortcuts a lot will give you a window here where it's asking you to select the file that you want to import. Now you'll notice next to Format, it says All Readable Files. When you click on this, it will show you all of the different file types that you can import into your Shortcuts a lot. This includes SVG files, SCUT files, Adobe Illustrator, EPS, there's also the brother scan and cut format, the FCM files. There's a variety of embroidery files from different manufacturers, which we'll get into in a later video, as well as pings and PDF files. Now in my case, for now, I'm just gonna import an SVG file. I have one on my desktop. Here it is, I'm selecting it and I'm hitting open and it will load the file for me and bring it onto the mat. So the import process is very simple. You click the import button if you don't want to specify the type of file that you want to import, I would just leave it here, all readable files, and it will look and allow you to select any of these file formats. And opening any of those file formats is as simple as either double clicking on them or highlighting them and hitting open, and they'll show up on your mat here, ready to go. Now the next button up here at the top is the trace button. Now there's gonna be a completely separate video for the trace image option because there's a lot to know about it, which I'm not gonna cover in this video. But this is the option that you're gonna to use to convert a JPEG, a GIF file, a ping file into something that you can actually cut. As you may or may not know, JPEGs, GIFs, ping files are bitmap files. They're made up of a series of little pixels, almost like a television screen. And that information cannot be cut without being converted into what's called a vector. And that's what the trace option does. So look for that in a separate video. The library button here is a button that's used to either show or hide your library. So clicking on it will either hide it or display it. And as you can see in the library, there are some shapes that come with the software. And you can use the library to organize your own content as well. 
So not only do you have the shapes that come with it that are already pre-organized for you, but if you purchase files online, say from Dreaming Tree or other sources, you can keep them all nice and organized here in your library as well. And opening any of these files is as simple as just clicking on the icon and it'll show up on your screen here. So I can literally import them this fast. Okay. Now in addition to images that you can cut, the library also shows you all of your fonts. Now if you have a special font that contains uh, a lot of glyphs or special characters, you can select that font and you'll notice that here you'll see the entire font, not just the ones that are available on your keyboard, but every single glyph and every single character that comes with that font. So if you want to put down one of these special characters, you'd grab your type tool here, click on your mat, and then go over here and select by clicking on one of these characters, the character that you want, and it'll put it down on your mat for you. Now another thing you can do here in the library section is filter the fonts by name. So if I want to access my varsity font without having to scroll through the entire list, I can just click on the letter V and it will show me, it'll bring up the letter V here. Okay, and there is my varsity font. And you can see here there are some special characters that I wouldn't be able to normally access with my standard keyboard. Also, you can take any of your fonts that you use a lot, for example, Varsity, you can hit this little button here, which will mark it as a favorite. And now, after doing that, when I click here, and I go under Favorites, it will only show the fonts that are considered my favorites. So this is a great way to kind of speed up your workflow, so you're not sitting there looking through and scrolling through thousands of fonts, as many of you probably have on your systems. And I'm sure that many of you have five or six go-to fonts that you use all the time. So this is a really great time saver. And if you want to remove a font from your favorites list, you just highlight it and click the little heart with the minus next to it, and it'll remove it from that list. Now, in addition to organizing your shapes and your fonts, you can also organize your projects. So for example, let's say I want to add my White Sox project to this list so I can access it more easily and find it more easily in the future. I would click on this little plus sign next to this document and then locate the White Sox scut file by highlighting it. You can double click or just highlight and hit open and it will add it to your project list here, which means you can just click here and it'll open up that project for you immediately. So next to library, you'll see a little button labeled store. When you click on this, it'll bring up the eShape store and this is a um, online store that is run by Shortcuts A Lot and Sizzix. So you'll find some basic gray, some Sizzix, uh, Miss Kate cuttables, things of that nature. These are all files that you can purchase directly through Sizzix and Shortcuts A Lot and import into your Shortcuts A Lot software. Now the next button here is the preview button. So let's go ahead and click on it and see what happens. Now clicking on the preview button will change the way that your mat appears and it will also bring up this little box. Now in this box, as you can see, things in red are labeled cut lines. Things in blue are labeled draw lines. If you're using draw lines and you have different colors of pens, you can use this option to turn on or turn off the different colors. Otherwise, it will just show them in blue. Now, this section here relates to things that you're actually going to print, which I don't have anything to print right now. And this option here will show you the print and cut registration marks. Now, this only applies to machines like the Silhouette Cameo and other machines that can do a print and cut directly through sure cuts a lot. This does not apply to Cricut or Brother Scan and Cut. You also can turn on your print margins so that it shows you the size of the page that will actually come out of your printer and it'll show you the printer name that you have selected here. And finally, you can click this option to show all the nodes if you want to see each of the actual nodes. These are the little dots that create the cut information that's sent to the cutting machine. Now if you're ever tracing an image and you, you realize that it's coming out really jagged or it's cutting really slow, there's a good chance that you may have a lot of nodes. And there's things you can do to clean that up, but this is a good way to kind of check to see how clean your image is. So in a nutshell, the preview window is a good tool to use to show you exactly what your cutting machine is going to cut and where. Now finally, this cutter button, or cut with cutter, 
is the button you're going to click on to send the cut information to the cutting machine. Now if you have a Cricut or a Brother Scan and Cut, you know that you cannot cut directly to the machine. So this is, does not apply to the Cricut or the Brother Scan and Cut. But if you have a Silhouette Cameo or any number of cutting machines that can directly talk to this software, you can click this button to send the information and cut it to that machine. And there's a variety of different settings here that you can adjust that are specific to that cutting machine. So that's pretty much it for the main toolbar here in SureCuts Lot 5.